I'm hoping. So, welcome guys to the second JML of the uh, JM, uh, JM lecture of the year. Great start. Yeah, normally these have just been annual or like two a year, normally. Yeah. Get them done once every like two weeks or so. I'm kind of uh, was meant to run this one um, to look about macro and micro. Unfortunately, you couldn't make it, so I'm the replacement. Um, day after, I'm, sh I'm sure you guys know. Previous lecture, um, I've done sequences, not inputs. You may know me for it. So. But here I am. We, we managed to book out the lecture hall, luckily, so hopefully we'll be able to do this uh, in the future. Thank, thank you for all for coming. Again, I can't state it enough that I'm, I'm glad that you guys actually came and I wasn't just in an empty room just talking to myself. Yeah, so now I know how lectures feel. But great, we're here to talk about macro, micro, and you, right? So, yeah. So, when I searched up macro and micro smash, I did not find anything because it's mainly a League of Legends sort of topic. But I think it's something that can be applied more specifically into a smash sort of concept, right? So I should, why, why should we even talk about macro and micro in the first place, right? I want to restate that fighting games, no matter what game you play, and the decisions, you consider and make, right? To try and think about is that we're thinking of different things as we play about what's important. But ultimately, we have to make a decision. But we don't make these decisions in a vacuum. What happens is we consider the context as well as the stimuli that occurs to us. That's why we have concepts of advantage and disadvantage. Uh, you have a lot of options, or you have limited options. The, so macro and micro are good terms for describing concepts, just like advantage and disadvantage. Of course, you can come up with your own definitions, your own terms, but really what I want to try and impart is we're trying to distinguish how different contexts influence different decisions. Great, so I've got some definitions here. I know it's a load of text. I can get some transitions in. But macro essentially is the logic of, that encompasses neutral and a lot of the parts of non-interactive advantage and disadvantage, right? So it's about two main questions. What do I want right now in terms of my game plan? And what do I think my opponent wants? Because although you might want something, you may be limited by what your opponent allows you to do in that situation. You can be limited by your own ability and your own tech, or you can be limited by your character and what your character can and cannot do. The main part of macro is it requires knowledge of how to balance and prioritize what you want to do with what you're playing. Whereas with micro, we consider that as a scramble situation, is if you're close to your opponent and you two can hit each other, you have to ask yourself, how do I win right now, right? Do I need to go out and just throw an aerial as fast as I can? Do I need to play patiently and just hold shield for now? Or is this in, in general, and I need to lead, right? So right now, that is your developed methods, habits, and techniques that you've already developed during your time playing this game to deal with those quick fire scenarios. These scenarios are going to happen so quick, normally, and they're going to be so foreign to you that to begin with, you're going to have to rely Built habit, right? But as you see the same scenario again and again, they become more reactable, right? You realize what's happening. You realize the lead up, the, the actions that they do beforehand before they try and make an action. And so you can move away from that scramble scenario into something that we can be quite. This requires something slightly different. We need to understand full sets and limitations of our individual characters, right? It's a bit more nuanced as to what you can and cannot do. But you also have to consider that you're playing rock, paper, scissors with your opponent, right? We all know that attack beats grab, grab beats shield, and of course shield beats attack, just like But we have to understand, has my opponent been shielding a lot this game? Does my opponent want to grab in this scenario because it, it'll kill? And so we need to be able to evaluate that risk. So, 
I've got some uh, Jam League 5 sets. Um, you may know these players, Spooky and Mamora. I know Spooky's in the chat. Or I saw in the stairwell once. So, <laughs> we're going to start off with Macro, right? Because that encompasses neutral, and it's where you're going to start off as soon as the 3-2-1 is done. And a lot of Macro, in terms of a game plan, can be summarized as, I want X because it allows for Y. Here, Ramora is throwing the fruit fruits because it allows him to run up and pressure Spooky, right? At this sort of range where Spooky has landed, he's forced to either steal or run away, but we know it invokes a specific reaction. Otherwise, Spooky's... So then we reach a micro stage, right? Ramora has chosen to run up very close and can do a bunch of options. So I've just had a look at Smash Frame data for Pac-Man here. And these are just a couple of the options that are possible for Pac-Man, right? You have Dash Attack, which is something that's 10 frames, but it's very, very safe and hard to punish if you are playing the Warrior. You have Forward Edge that do similar things that kind of pressure that, that top section. You can do them landing, you can do them rising. They cover that main section on top. As well as Grab, which for Pac-Man is quite slow, but as you know from the RPS, it's straight up beat shield. So if Ramor is able to tell that Spooky is wanting to shield a lot in this game, Grab is still a good option. And I should mention, as the game runs in 60 frames per second, and the regular reaction speed for uh, just a standard average human is about 200 milliseconds, or about 12 frames, that is still within the range of it's just unreactable, right? And so in a macro, this is still a scramble situation. But if you are playing the Wario, you can still say, opponent has been throwing these options more. I can try and react to this close run up, right? Or if he wants to grab me at a very close range or even a space roll range. But let's see how this plays out. So he goes for the bear. Um, and we see that shift in advantage and disadvantage. No longer a scramble situation. This is something that you can start to react to now. Bear is about, you want to say a couple, it's still reactable on hits, and especially because you get that shield uh, lag. So the warrior can definitely react to an option here, but his options are quite limited here. You can up smash, you can up B. There might be room to try and do an aerial if you'd like to. But now there's a clear person in advantage who has the ability to act, as well as disadvantage. Pac-Man is throwing out an aerial currently. His hitbox is inactive because he hit something, and so it's punishable. And so let's see what happens here now, right? The last slide is, unfortunately, Spooky goes for the grab. Um, it is not the right option because Pac-Man is up in the air and it's just too high. Bless you. And unfortunately, we, we don't get that punished, but we see the roles reverse. We, we see someone else is in disadvantage now, and Pac-Man is the one in advantage. He can act. This can continue on and on and on, and we do see this a lot in JML of this sort of cat and mouse chasing of switching advantage and disadvantage, right? A lot of pro players don't like this uncertainty, right? Or if they've chosen this uncertainty, they've chosen this because the risk reward is really good for me if I continue to engage in this cat and mouse. But because there are about even percents here, Ramar just decides to run away, reset to neutral, and continue playing, waiting for his opening. And so that sequence here, or this circular motion, we see this a lot in a lot of Smash and a lot of fighting games. The this starting to condition to make my opponent forced to act into seeing the reaction and trying to make a guess out of it. And I should also mention that in this micro situation, one person clearly has more options than the other, right? So he's made a good positional and uh, situational advantage here. That's why he's going in into trying to read an option and it doesn't work out, to trying to reset back to neutral and continuing. Um, I'm going to restate it again. You don't have to try and force an advantage if you don't want. Setting up back to neutral is OK. So we are going to have a look at another set. So Spoonie versus Skippy Dingle Chalk, um, some, of, some of the best that we've got here in JML, I would say. But let's have a look more in terms of the lens of their characters now. So Wario and Pac-Man are both sort of brawler type characters that have good air mobility, fairly decent aerials, and can sort of contest that area of playing close and mixing you up. Now the roles are a, little more, a bit more different. We have Falco, who has really strong combo game, 
and has good combo starters such as grab anything you can really think of but he's still quite short range he also has another pressure tool which is key which is the laser which makes you forced to either keep on jumping away to avoid it or to try and approach to make him stop Bruni and Bowser on the other hand slow and more damaging call outs right it's going to be hard for them to get in but once they're in they've got their choices of grab side b any tilts, anything that is safe on shield, even the harder reads of F smash, and down smash, and up smash, right? Let's see how this plays out. I did some video editing. Hopefully it shows up. Here we go. I can't believe this works in Embed. Crazy. Yeah. Did some, booted up Premiere Pro. So we're going to, oh, there we go. Going to pause it initially. So right now, we've got a neutral start, that macro that we were talking about, where they're just going to wait for an opening. Booney, a lot more devastating if he does get that grab, if he runs up. But, and so, uh, Ashish going to play a lot safer. Please work. Here we go. It's loading directly from another drive, so. Yep. So, Ashish able to recognize that he's not going in, sets up his own pressure with laser, right? And this is advantage state. The reason why I sped that up is because advantage and disadvantage are probably too large of a topic to cover from, from macro and micro, but I think we'll, we'll try and cover that later in another jam lecture. So here we see Spoonie able to tech out, and that's the end of the advantage state, right? We go back into neutral, and we see that for both players, right? They, they reset. Ashish doesn't even go for more. He jumps back, controls that space. Now he's got center. That's why he was able to win, right? Then later on, they, they continue to engage, and they go through this cycle again and again and again. I'll try and play the whole video out. So you don't have to through my, my shoddy uh, options. The first options are also good to break up the neutral. I'm trying to find that punish. Switching to that advantage and disadvantage like we talked about. And again, aerial disadva disadvantage, another topic that we just can't cover right now. But a really good spot dodge from Spoonie, and able to recognize that another RPS is going to come in. Spot dodge, beating grab, and they just reset to neutral, right? So there were a lot of decisions in that clip. I had to slow it down so I could describe those decisions, but we're always making, right? And those decisions, though, are common. They happen a lot, right? In a short amount of time. It's a game, right? That's why we want to run JM League, because you get so many different games, right? So from the, so many different players, right? That's a great way to build your your vocabulary in terms of dealing with micro and macro situations. All right, so some homework for you guys, please. Have a look at some JML sets of your own. It can be yours or it can be someone else's. And clip about a 30 second to a minute or so. Set it to half speed or even a quarter speed so you can, and just pause it intermittently, okay? What you want to do is try and find, look at both players' game plan. Are they playing a heavy sort of character that is looking for a slow opening but can't get in? Are they playing a very fast character that can win a lot of times but needs a lot more to do so, right? And you can try and identify those transitions that we've seen from macro to micro advantage, right? And then lastly, decisions, they can still work, but you still need to agree or disagree if they were the right choice, right? Sometimes you can pull out a randy F smash because you misinput it. And that might not have been the right option, right? Because it was very unsafe. But it just happened to work out, right? So it's important to evaluate why the decision was made in the first place. So the main question we want to ask is how do I improve my macro and micro, right? So with macro, I do have an article that I'd like you guys to read as well. Um, this is more about um, one of my other hobbies. And it's written in 1999, so it's way before Smash Ultimate's time, way before Smash 4 and um, Smash Brawl. And I think, yeah, maybe a little bit with Melee? I'm not too sure. But who's the beatdown, right? It's about considering if you're playing an adversarial game and your options and decisions you can make are slightly different, you have to decide who's faster in making that decision. If you and assert yourself as a beatdown when you're slower than the beat. Need to be is going to be so vast that you're just going to end up losing the game, right? 
you might be playing a really, really fast character traditionally. Uh, for example, um, I don't know, like Marth, Lucina, and you can move around the stage. But if you're playing against like a fox or a sheik who can throw out faster options than you, but has better frame data, then you need to play slower. You have to play more defensive, right? Even though you want to play, right? So they have some general guidelines and try to apply them here at Smash, right? So you need to consider who has more approach tools, right? So Falco in that case has Illusion, which is very risky. But other than that, he can still just has to run up. He can aerial and land on you. So if you have more approach tools than your opponent, normally you have one six. And also mention if you're behind, if you're down a stock, or if your opponent has less percent than you, then you are still forced to go in, right? Who has more reactive tools? And reactive can mean out of shield. Sometimes you can dash back and have a good punish. A really strong dash back into F smash. I'm sure you guys have copped that occasionally. Usually they're the ones that have to play control. And then Zelda's a prime example who has to play slower, even though she has stronger approach tools than some. Right? And who has more effective escape and zoning tools as well? Almost always they have to play that control player. So high level ZSS. Um, players will abuse their movement, such as not even their specials, but even their jump height, their speed, the fact that they can wall jump as well, and abuse that to sort of circle camp you and play a lot slower than they need to, right? You can play them aggressive, right? But we do see in higher play that you want to play a less risky option, right? Improving macro, again, going back to what do I want? Um, this was the original statement, I want X because it allows for Y. But you can flip it on its head if you want to. You can say, because I have this tool, I'm allowed to do other things, right? Because I have a projectile, I'm allowed to zone you if I want to, right? Because I have a charge projectile, I'm allowed to stay in the corner and charge up my projectile, and you're forced to try and stop me if you, don't res if you respect it too much, right? And you can flip that again on its head. Like, because I'm able to move around and I'm capable as a player of moving away from charge shot and I don't respect it, I can let you charge for free, right? And I can do other things. I can take stage control if I want to, right? So it's thinking about what you want and the tools you have to get what you want, right? All right, looking at micro, and this goes back to a game like your sequences, not inputs. Um, you need to explore your options, right? You need to critically evaluate the tools that you have and say, what kind of properties does that give me, right? So again, charge shot allows you to create that pressure. And you're allowed to sort of mix things up. So for example, tomahawk grabbing is just jumping into grab, right? That's all it is, right? But it's such a powerful tool in terms of defining the neutral because it represents another option, right? It makes you look like you're about to aerial, right? So that's something you do need to spend a lot of time in, in training mode and thinking about. You need to ask yourself, what can I do and what does that mean, right? Does that make sense? I know this is more conceptual in terms of the idea, but I want to highlight the fact that you need to spend time in training mode. You don't have to hit the other person. You don't have to like play against an opponent. You need to spend time thinking about your options, right? And Ernest is a big proponent of this in terms of saying you need to focus on your own character because in a game of 80 characters, it's going to be impossible to learn every single matchup, right? But you know your character, right? And you need to know your character way more because you're playing that character every single game. It's going to be a constant. But other than that, that does it about for my lecture. I just want to say that there's a lot more to this game than just macro and micro, right? They're just terms we made up, and they're terms that are generally in the community, right? It's just one way that we can define game states, right? You could define things up into neutral and then advantage, disadvantage. It's just a framework, as we say. Um, so in a lot of commerce and marketing disciplines, we just have frameworks as just general guidelines. You're allowed to tweak the framework, right? You're allowed to play around with what you've got and see what works. And again, that's what I'd ask you to do. See what your character can do. See what your character cannot do. Ask your friend what you can do. What's busted, huh? Man, Pikachu's so good, he can just lightning loop you. Man, uh, dude, he has a good up throw. He can dash attack. He's got everything, right? You need to think about what other players think of your characters. But yeah, as with all frameworks, you need to see what works for you as a player. That about does it for my lecture. Um, I didn't get too much time to work it.
Uh, here you go. Okay, if you got any questions about macro, micro, anything that wasn't clear. But yeah, I was, how's Discord going? Hey, thanks, fellas. Thanks, fellas. Appreciate it. So in terms of schedule, hopefully we'll get um, Ernest Lamel to talk about uh, ledge trapping. Um, he's been working a lot on it, and he's got something to show. I know we've been talking more about conceptual ideas, and I think this would be really good as something you can implement immediately. And then if you guys have um, any other things that you guys want to cover, yeah, feel free to DM me or, or talk to me about questions. I know you guys want to learn commentary. I think James Backett might want to do a lecture on comms and how that works. So yeah, it's totally open. That's why we on Gem Lectures. If you want to stand where I'm standing and talk about a topic that you want to learn more about, I would definitely be happy to do that, right? Because I've learned a lot trying to get this off the ground with other, other lectures as well. Yeah. Uh, is that a question? Please, please say yes. Yeah, sure. Sure. So if you've had a look at your previous time rounds, I, I re recommend look doing a VOD analysis. We do offer. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, sure. So um, what Lance has been asking is, how can I implement what we've just learned here into my next Jam League round, right? Because how many rounds are you guys in? Like, this is the fifth or the sixth? Fifth one, yeah. you got two more left, and so you guys already have had four under your belt, right? So four VODs is still quite valuable, especially for a best of five, as to what you do, right? You can clearly see your habits of what you want, and you should ask yourself, what am I not doing, right? So again, remember the three main things of trying to cover um, cover against shield, cover against spot dodge, and covering against someone else attacking, right? Is there something that I've been deficient in that I'm not doing? How can I more implement that that tool to make it more ambiguous, right? If I've got an existing tool, can I, can I implement on it further, right? Can I pretend I'm doing one thing and then do the other? So that, those are quite tricky questions in terms of a concept. And if you guys want board reviews, I'm sure most of us would be happy to sit down with you, talk about it, right? So, but again, board review is definitely very helpful. Ernest? I'm not sure if we'll be able to pick you up. I think everyone can. Right? Can I'm, oh, is it for beer? Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so thought analysis is good. Are chucking anything on either general or or learn to play would be very good, and we'll try and get you an answer as fast as we can. Um, if there's something that you're unfamiliar with, I would re recommend looking at um, pro player vods as well, right? So there's probably someone out there that plays your character as well. Probably a little bit more proficiently than you is, is my guess, but it's you should have a look at how others play the same character, right? Because they're prioritizing something else different. Yeah, go ahead. Right. Right. So this is the difficult part. Oh yeah, sorry. So if we review the VOD, how can we fix that mistake and then implement it into our next game? So there are a couple of things and it goes beyond being conceptual about knowing it to being a mechanical and remembering it in your muscle memory, right? So of course you can view a VOD and say, this is what went wrong. This is what I'm going to do different. I recommend booting up training mode and shadow booting, right? Doing the same thing that you did that you should have done, right? Practice it on one side, practice it on the other, right? That way you've got it not only up here in your head, you've got it down, down there in your arms as well, right? 
And that's that's a step that a lot of people miss, right? If you're a really good player, then you can probably skip this step. But if you're still trying to learn and you're trying to remember new things, you're either going to have to develop that muscle memory now, or you're going to develop it in friendlies or even during the set, right? And you don't want to try and develop something new just in the set where, where a lot of things are on the line. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, good thing about that is when you shoehorn things, yeah, you just well, when does this pull? When does it? Great. Any other questions? I think that was a pretty good spread. What do you think, fellas? Even though we started like 20 minutes late? Yeah, pretty good. Thank you. Hey, again, I can't see this enough. Thank you guys for all coming. Really do appreciate it. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll get this sort of turnout like in what, two weeks, hopefully? After you guys have had your Easter. Should be chill. All right. I think so. Um, think so, yeah. And then it's either that. I'm not too sure. Do you know that, Trent? I'm not. I'm terrible with weeks. When's week A? We can probably do it top twelve. JML, some slotted then. Up to you. Mm -hmm. Might be yeah. Yeah. Are you guys okay with Wednesday? Because I know it cuts into like mega. Okay. So yeah, twenty seven. Save any calendars. Does Wednesday work for you guys? Because we can. Shift it to Thursday so you guys are not like fixing a friendly time that you guys could be spending in mega. Up to you. Yeah, that is true. There you go. All right. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for all coming. Much appreciated. Hey, thanks.